Tatum, with over four decades of not only experience and research and dedication to his craft. Matthew, come on out here. You have to meet the creator and the developer of this amazing line. The thing is, makeup has evolved brushes have not and you are taking them to a whole new level because a lot of times it's not about the product it's about how we're putting that product on isn't it well you just said the most important thing that i think happens in makeup and believe me i didn't at the first i always thought it was about a product right i'm sure you would it's yeah. like oh i've got to get a better foundation find that magic uh, right. foundation right. Exactly. the magic powder all yes. of those things and you know it, it was harder to find really good products maybe 40 years ago right now there's some great products every place yeah and so now with all those wonderful choices it now becomes exactly what you said which is how do you use them how do they go on absolutely and a lot of times the applicators don't match you know, these a great formulas of things, and well we've got a demonstration that you have to see to believe that really resonates for me I mean if, if something really tells you how what makes these so special and so different the price let's just start there for a moment this is really what how artiste began here at HSN this really kind of launched this whole category for us in honor of the holidays nine $95 with free shipping, guaranteed delivered by Christmas, $19 on your credit card. I think the first thing that people will notice, uh, Matthew, is the shape looks a little bit different. This is a, a whole different concept in terms of, and the fibers feel different too, right? And it's about this, actually. <laughs> it is. It's about the finger. All of these brushes are based on the ergonomics of what you would do oh, with yes, your yes, finger. Yes, yes, I'm like, I'm not sure where you're going. <laughs> no, sorry. sorry. No, that, that is a little weird. Sorry. That, that is. No, conventional brushes are all about painting on something else or someone sure, else. Of course. And when you try to turn it backwards on yourself, that's just plain awkward and weird. Absolutely. It needs to be something that feels natural. And so that's why the shape of the brushes is what they are. Absolutely. So real quickly, you get your number three oval. You get your number six oval. Sorry, I'm wearing black on black. So it's a little hard to see, so I'm trying to see, get here. Uh, here is, well, actually, we'll show you the purchase separately, and then I want you to see Matthew's demonstration. And then, of course, sorry, I can't hold all of these at once, so this is actually a little bit easier. The brush cleaning pad, which is also really revolutionary to me. So that was, a, that's six, $55 on its own. The oval six is $24.50. The oval three is another $18.50. The circle 1R brush, again, different texture, different shape. That's another $18.50. The linear one that's another 1850 and then of course you get the brush cleansing foam Matthew should we just go to the demonstration and show this off sure let's do that I, I think what makes it so decidedly unique and if you're a fan of course please call us that testimonial talk line is open we would love to meet and greet you 524-209 so Matthew like we kind of you know started the presentation off by talking about you might think you might have to buy a more expensive powder or a more expensive foundation in order to get a better application. In many cases, your brushes could be failing you. I know you made the analogy to me once. It's almost like, you know, they took brushes from like a craft store, or from a paint store. They were never really designed to do what yours do. You're right. They're art brushes. Right. Conventional brushes are really watercolor brushes. Okay. That's where they came from. That's sure. what they're about. The problem with that is it sounds like, well, art is art. Uh, what difference would it make? Uh, well, what you do with a watercolor brush is completely different than what you do with makeup. Yes, it is. And a lot of makeup is really powders. Yes. Well, a watercolor brush isn't even made to work oh, with yeah, powders yeah. You're at right. all. You're right. And so how are you supposed to do that? For well, sure. people create their own methods right. and techniques, and but they're just not really, really they're great. They're not. Well, I, I, stop what you're doing because I want you to see this presentation because I think this is the best way to show off the difference of what you do. Now, by the way, the, the, the foundation powder that you're using right now, you, everybody knows this brand, right? I mean, it's so, it's, well. it's I know. It's a brand <laughs> that you would think, okay, it's a better brand. My, my traditional makeup brush is going to do a fine job with application. So where are we going to start, Matthew? Well, uh, the reason that I have a really dark surface here is I want to show you that when you're using any kind of makeup product and you're putting it on a dark surface, you'll really be able to see how does it go on. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, because if you're trying it on your skin, yeah. hopefully it's going to match your skin, and you won't really see yeah. is it streaky, is it blotchy. You're so right. I want to just show you the differences. So okay. this is a powder foundation. By the way, more people buy powder, powder foundations than any other kind oh, of no formula kidding. foundation. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So that's why I want to show you here. Gotcha. Now, if you go into a store and you say, give me the foundation brush, right? they're probably going to show you a brush that's this kind of configuration. 
configuration. We've all seen it. I've got okay. it. Yep. Yeah. Sure. And these aren't inexpensive they're not cheap. at all. No, no. <laughs> no, they're not. And but that's what they'll do. So what right. I want to do is I want to show you what it's like when we pick up this powder foundation here. Okay. We'll knock off any excess, sure. and we're going to actually use it by putting it on this paper. Oh wow. And you begin to see, okay, now that's how that applies. And that's what it would do when it's on your skin. Okay. And you may say, well, I don't use that kind of brush. I use a different one. Right. Well, again, if you go you know into a brush. store, they'll probably say, well, maybe you should use this. Yep. And this is a very popular foundation brush, too. You bet. So we'll try this one out. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll load that one up. Now, yep. this one, I can go two directions. Yeah. But remember, it almost acts like a little broom here oh, when you do it. And even oh if you decide Lord. to swirl it, it starts to take away product. It, do it does, actually. It does. It's like yeah. where the product Because goes. it's like a broom. It, it scatters yeah. it, and it and it moves it out of the way. Okay. And that, I don't think that's really what we want uh, an applicator to do. No, we don't. So now I'll be showing you. Well, actually, let me show you with the brush that you've got okay. in your hand. Perfect. So that's now, this is a, this is an oval six size here. Right. So this is that same product here. Right. And we'll see if there's any difference in the way that this <gasps> actually applies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold the phones. Because it's so funny, the, the brush that Matthew just used, I have, uh, you know, prior to you, that was the brush that I've seen in almost every makeup artist kit Everyone that I've worked has with. Everyone has those. Everyone has You know, has that those. I've seen, you know, hosts having their makeup kit. And I'm like, where's all the product going? See, that's just it. Not only are you getting a better, better application, it's seamless. It's smooth. You don't get kind of that whiskered or that streaking effect that you get with kind of that broom action. And look what happened with, these were the two conventional brushes that right. I use. If you really look closely on here, what you'll see is texture. Yes. You're right. It exaggerates the texture of this particular uh, paper that I'm using. So like pores and lines. But on your skin, right. your skin has texture. Right. Do you want that to be exaggerated? Ooh. I don't. Ooh. And this one did the same thing. It exaggerated it. And if the more I used it to try to get a smoother application, yeah. the more it took it off. Yeah. So that's inefficient. So what you really want is something like this that efficiently uses the product. Now, the secret of why it works, of right. course, is Cosmofiber. I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah. And that's why this is the point in the presentation where I, I like to say I wish we had feel a vision because as if the shape you know weren't interesting enough of course kind of mimicking you know your fingers or your hands talk a little bit about your fiber because that was also a special development you know for all you. those years that I was using those conventional brushes I realized that animal hair which is what's in most conventional brushes is really inefficient when it comes to makeup products right it picks it up pretty well, but it does a lousy job of laying it down. Right. And that's the end of the formula that you want when it comes sure. to makeup. You don't want something, a tool that picks up product really, really well, yeah. and then does a terrible job of letting of it go. Of course, yeah. And uh, so I, I threw away the whole idea of what animal hair was about. I didn't try to mimic animal hair in any way. And I created a fiber that was just for use with cosmetics, which is why it's called Cosma Fiber, Cosmetic right. Fiber. So that's exclusive to you. And it's actually trademarked, yes. I was gonna say, uh, yeah. no one else no has one anything else has like it. that. So it's not yeah. like we could say, you know, compare this to XYZ brush or compare this to XYZ sponge. You can't. There's nothing like There's it. There's nothing like yeah. it. And, and even though you might see things where that shape. It, yes. Cause, yeah. Because people now have caught on to that shape that I did, which is all about the ergonomics. Right. But when you get past the shape, if you don't have Cosmo fiber, you're never going to get that result. Ever, ever, ever. And uh, Michael, or <laughs> Michael, That's sorry, okay. Matthew, would you like to talk a little bit about the sponges or the shapes and the brushes? Where would you like uh, to go next? Well, what we can do is we can talk about, like, not everyone wears a powder foundation. Right. And so people watching this may say, well, that's fine with powders, but okay. I wear a liquid. Sure. So is it going to do the same thing? Yeah. So what I can show you is what happens okay. if we do it with a liquid. Sounds good. So let's do that. I'll get rid of these here. And I've got my little bag here that's got some, I picked a liquid foundation that has a lot of uh, pigment load in it. Okay. So that we'll really be able to, again, we'll see that contrast right. of how well the other tools are really uh, 
applying that product right. to the skin. So let me play devil's advocate here. So if, if someone is buying a prestige foundation for, you know, pore minimizing or illuminating, they're really not getting the benefit of that upscale product if they're still applying it in the old way, right? It's true, yeah. I mean, they're, they're really not getting the full effect. So, and obviously we're going to do a little bit, you know, in each, you know, different application, but I guess my whole point is this. If you're going Oops. to bother to invest, you know, in regardless of whether or not it's a it's a department store or a drug store or a prestige brand foundation or powder, then we obviously want more bang for your buck. And the first time I, I started investigating makeup brushes, that, that was life changing. But what Matthew has done is a game changer. Uh, I, I forget how many millions or billions of impressions do you have? Social media. Yeah, is, it's it, billions, it, believe it, it or millions. not. Because really, you you set the whole industry on its ear. I mean, you, you, you know, did. That's <laughs> the lovely thing. You know, there are people out there that are so obsessed with makeup that when they discover something that really, really works or is really, really different, they embrace it unbelievably they well. They do. So what I want to show you with okay. the liquid, finally, I, I was struggling a little bit. I've got a bottle that's kind of running out of its product. <laughs> right. there, so I'm sure we've all experienced <laughs> yes, that. Yes, we have. So um, anyway, I want to show you that, uh, again, when it comes to liquids, this, that same configuration of brush, which is that paddle brush, is probably what a lot of people will recommend. So we'll go ahead and see how well does this work. My objective is I'm gonna to try to see if I can fill that circle oh, as uniformly wow. as possible. Now you can see that the first few strokes were kind of okay, and now no matter what I do, yeah, it's kind of run, it's run out of, and yeah. most of it is actually sitting in the brush. Say, it I gets see, trapped in there. It's funny, I see more product on the brush than I do on my canvas or my face. Yeah, basically. Well, it gets in there and right. then it never touches your skin yeah, again because it's, it's deep into the brush. Right. Now, the other option is a lot of people are really keen on luxury uh, makeup sponges the, I, these course. days. These and there are a lot sponges. of different brands. Yeah. And the ones that are the real luxury ones are kind of have a curved surface to yeah. them. Now, what they recommend for use with this, all the websites for the brands that do this, is they say you should bounce. I was it. just going to say, yeah. they say bounce. And yeah. so I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to pick it up here like it was supposed to be, and then oh, I'll boy. bounce. It, okay. Which is like if any of you ever do arts and crafts or anything like that, <laughs> it's actually uh, like stippling I, that's or what doing. I was just yeah. gonna say it's like stippling a holiday, wall. you know, yeah. like. <laughs> yes. And and a lot of it actually gets soaked into the sponge because right. after all, sponges yeah. are, are about accumulating things. Okay. And holding on to things. And now we'll see. We'll we'll use the oval six again. Okay. And we'll see if there's any difference in the kind of uh, application that we can get with this. Wow. Now that's dramatic. Yeah. That is dramatic. And and you can see that Holy the really cow. significant difference is, is that that product was able to be uh, applied and dispersed in a much more even way. And, and with the others, we always saw a, saw a pattern. And you don't, you know, you wouldn't see that if you were trying that on your skin. If you were right. at a counter and you were trying it, you would think everything's fine. Yeah. And you wouldn't realize that you were getting an awful lot of product in one place it, it, and hardly yes. any in another place. Yeah. And even when you use your fingers, yes. you think it's even, right. but it's really but, not. But it's not. And part of the secret to this is that we've got so many fibers that are packed into that one brush. Nice. Like the Oval 6 yep. brush, that, guess how many fibers are in that? Now, oh. I'll give you a hint. Okay. On the top of your head, you've got about yeah. 130,000 hairs on the top of your head. Okay. So how many fibers do you think are in that little brush? Oh. It's a little smaller than your head. Yeah, I was going to say, so Just I would assume that it would be smaller than what's on a human head, I would think, right? That has, that has 90,000 90,000 individual fibers in that one brush. In this one and by the way, every one, one of those brush. fibers, because they're engineered and they're right. man-made, every one of them is to my specifications. And it goes right down to a microscopically small tip of yeah. three microns. Oh, nice. That's smaller than you can see with the oh, no naked kidding. eye. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so the Oval 6, now is that what the one that you'd recommend for foundation? or what That's you, it. Okay, foundation, so that's, okay. contour, highlighting. Some people actually, a lot of people when they do their eyes, they'll do one base color over the whole lid. Okay. That's a really nice size for that. Okay, oval six. My oval three, which? Oval three is great for eyeshadow. It's great for concealer under the eye area. Oh, yeah. Beside the nose. Some people actually touch up the corners of their mouth with oh, yeah. oh, foundation or concealer. Really so it's idea. a great size for that. Okay. Now talk a little bit about the circle. So why why the circle? Now What's this is a circle 1R and the R means that, that the tips of it are rounded. 
Okay. And we actually have in some of our other collections, we have the circle one, and that has flat tips, but this the R means it's rounded. Okay. And what that means it's really good for is yeah. like if you want to do sculpting of the eyelid and you've got yes. a crease, you just run it in the crease. Well, Allison can kind of show oh, you right exactly. here. Exactly, there we go. She's showing you, now she's using that to do highlight on the brow bone. And then she'll also show you how neatly it fits right into the crease of the eye. Nice. So that you can accentuate that okay. area if you want. Sure. It's also not too big at all for you to be able to go underneath the lower lashes okay. and just line the whole eye that way, like a smoky uh, eye. Yeah. Oh, oh, that would be And if you have good. a little blemish that you might want to cover and right. you just want a focused amount of product you're putting on there, okay. the Circle 1R is perfect because you place the product, you just touch it to the skin and you barely, barely rotate it. Okay. And because it's rounded, it feathers the edges so you never see the edge of the concealer or the oh, foundation nice. that you're using. Because okay. you know, sometimes you put on concealer and you've got a real distinct uh, edge Yes, there. you better this, believe it. This helps prevent that. And, and I'm curious, okay, the linear, now why the now linear? The linear is wherever you want to do lines on your face. Okay. So uh, your brows are like a line when right. you want to fill those in or when you want to finish them off. Okay. Or when some people really love to do the top and the lower part of their brows so that it's very defined. Oh, yeah. The linear does it for you because it's already in a line shape. Oh, nice. Uh, it also, if you want to line your eyes, the upper lash line, the lower lash line, anything that where you want to line a product, it does that too. It, it does. One of the great advantages of the Linear One is that you can line your eye. You can get a lined eye look with just eyeshadow. Not, oh, that's Not true. a cream, not oh, a liquid. Think of that. You can get it with powder. What a great idea. And I know we don't have uh, one over here, but talk a little bit about that cleansing pad as well. That, uh, that was something that was, was Yeah, new. no, I don't have one here either. Okay. Well, the clean, well, because the fiber is so unique and because I, I really wanted to make sure that it always performed as best it could, yeah. I actually created a cleaning system for it. And so the microfiber cloth that goes over the pad it has one million strands per square inch. Oh, does it And really? when you run the brush across it, and that's all you have to do, it oh. actually grabs all of the product out this of it. so cool. Did, I'm wondering if they took it away. I'd love for you guys to see that in person. I know you can see it um, in the picture there, but it really is, it's such, it, it, it's such a revolutionary and breakthrough idea. And that's one of the reasons that, no kidding, social media is